Okay, so about six months ago or so, I had purchased a couple of these mist coolant little system things off Amazon with the intention of doing a DIY coolant system for my CNC machine since it's an older style that doesn't didn't come with one and believe it or not the for the cheap price that these are they actually turned out to be halfway decent but for the system that I had devised to do this with which I've already disassembled but I have parts of it over here as you can see I uh, originally was using a, I had a Gatorade bottle right here and I had epoxied here's actually the lid for it over here you can see that I had epoxied a hose fitting into the Gatorade bottle lid and then drilled a hole for the coolant hose to go in there and epoxied that in place. Also, I did it up on the underside of it down there. And it was working, like I said, it was working more than good enough for like six months. But the downside was that those Gatorade bottles only hold like one liter and so if I was running a long program of anything over an hour, I was going to have to be trying to refill the Gatorade bottle in the middle of the program. If I didn't want to stop it and risk losing my place or anything. And so shortly after installing the first one, I installed a second one. And periodically also, periodically I would change, I would alternate which ones were going so if one was you know running low i could fill the other one up keep it going but also because you can see with the locations of these like this was the first one i installed right here it was i wasn't getting any coolant on this side of the cutter or when i was cutting parts on the far side over there so i would use both of them in tandem but also at times kind of let them alternate and uh, everything was going pretty good with it. But within the last couple weeks, uh, I noticed that a leak had developed on the one that was on the left side that I could hear from the Gatorade bottle. And I mean, other than having to kick the compressor on more frequently, it wasn't really affecting anything. But like I said, from the start, it was more just a test run to see if this would work, but I knew I was eventually gonna to wanna to upgrade to something that contained more fluid than just the having two one liter Gatorade bottles for it. And uh, so that after that leak happened for the last couple of weeks, still kept using it and whatnot, no big deal. Well then over here, I, uh, on this one right here, I've replaced it already, but if you see this fitting right there, I was going to use the dead blow to tap a workpiece in to the vise, onto the vise parallels, and accidentally caught that and had broke it off with my downward swing of the hammer, and, uh, had to replace that one, which I can't even remember, as you can if I, I think I, yeah, I, I took this, this one right here, I took off the other side, as you can see, right there. And uh, because that was the side over there that was leaking already, and so I figured I could operate with just one for a little bit, everything would be cool. Well, when I went to do that, I figured, okay, well, if I'm changing, move, moving shit around to where there's only one operating for a little bit, I might as well try and upgrade the container that to a bigger size so I gotta refill it less. And so I had the idea because I was running low on the gallon of coolant I had was almost empty one and I had a new one show up. So I took the old bottle of it right here and I only there was only like less than an inch of coolant left in it so I just 
that was pretty much right on with the one to 15 ratio that it needed. So I just filled it up with water and tried to do the same thing of just epoxying another hose fit into that lid and putting the smaller coolant hose down in there. And because of the air issues leaking on the other side, it was causing some problems at this point of the coolant to not flow out as hard as I would like. And so I even went as far, even after detaching it from the other side, I was still having a few issues with this one that I had, uh, I even detached a little filter that comes with those, which I have over here, hold on. Right here, you can see, they come with these little filters, which honestly, I kind of, I'm starting to think they're fucking pointless. I mean, they have a point, but they may be more problem than they're worth. So, uh, spend an evening, you know, taking all this shit apart, you know, re and that stuff to that lid, kind of getting it all. I had to, because the way I had the container set up there, I had to cut off part of the thing that holds the container on there to fit the bigger one and whatnot. Do all that, fill it up, assume it's gonna be good. The original reason why I chose the Gatorade bottles is because I could tell that, I knew that a two liter Coke bottle could hold, it could withstand the pressure up to like 200 PSI, I believe. And the Gatorade bottles were even a thicker walled plastic than that, so I knew, I thought that would be the best way to go. Also, you can see over here, that just the surface area of a Gatorade bottle lid was a lot bigger than like a two liter lid to actually have to drill into and epoxy that shit in there. Well, I was kind of concerned about the kind of plastic and the thickness of this container over here and the same, the kind of plastic with the lid, like, cause it just, it didn't seem to be as sturdy as the Gatorade bottles were. But the Gatorade bottles had worked good enough that I figured, eh, give it a shot, should work. So I had all this shit set up, spent the last next uh, couple nights ago, spent the next day or two having to do a bunch of non-machining related shit, just, you know, computer work, you know, dealing with kids and whatnot, just wasn't actually running the machine. So it just kind of sat there. I assumed it was good. Went to go try and run something earlier turn the coolant on to start a program and this fucking bottle swells up at least an additional like 30% of its size looked like a fucking watermelon like it was gonna explode and so I immediately ran back here and cut the pressure off off that regulator to it before it blew up or anything and I, at that time, I even had like half the, only had like 20 PSI going into it. And with the Gatorade bottles, I was generally operating with like 38 PSI going into the Gatorade bottles from that regulator. And so, I was like, shit, like, what am I going to do now? Like, I already spent an evening trying to correct this issue and I'm still got to fuck with the other side got super fucking irritated pissed off was a grumpy old son of a bitch for the whole afternoon and finally after I came to my senses decided that I was gonna go and buy one of these water filter container things right here that I've seen other videos of people using to for DIY coolant systems and put that on there and hopefully this will correct it and if this works which I, there's a one video of a guy I can't remember his name but he actually started off with one of these and then later goes and changes to using the two liter bottles after watching a ox tools video 
of how he uses the two two liter bottles but the difference is from their setups and what i had was they both had lays and so they were able to machine an aluminum fitting that the two liter would screw into and lock up better and not have to leak and not be worried on just epoxy plastic on epoxy plastic i since i don't have a lathe that wasn't going to be an option for me and so i'm going to try and go this route with it now and if this works i'm going to put another i'm going to put this one first on the side the right side where that jug is over there now and if it works good then i'm going to do another one on the left side and they have a I just got back from Tractor Supply buying all this shit to do this with. All the stuff that's laid out right there. And they had one of these for like eight more dollars that was like twice the size of it. And I wanted to go with that one. But this is a three quarter inch NPT fitting right here. And the other one was a one inch NPT fitting. And because I live in a small town, the tractor supply, uh, along with everything going on in the world with supply is chain issue shit, they, and the fact that they're just hella disorganized up there, they didn't have any of the fittings I would need to just create something without having to machine anything to be able to neck down from a one inch to the fitting I'm gonna need right here for the hose. So I decided to go with the smaller one just because they had all the other components and I didn't wanna have to do any altering or making anything. I just wanted to buy shit, put it together, get it done. But if this works, I'm gonna go back and get the bigger one for the other side. And so at that point, I'll have two of them back up on there again one a little bit bigger than the other but so yeah that's where we're at gonna i guess i'll try and video some of me doing this shit you know maybe this will depending on how this turns out hopefully this will be some good information for somebody else considering doing a diy cooling system and can learn from my failures and hopefully mimic my success if I this if I can manage to make this work out the way it does or the way I hope but yeah
Yeah, so that first drill bit was bent. It was a cheap one from Harbor Freight. I was wanting to use it. Since I'm just going to be drilling into some PVC, but here I'm going to have to break out the good set. And uh, for anyone that doesn't know, this Viking drilling tool, American brand, uh, all their products are available on Amazon, surprisingly, and they make very, very good quality drill bits. For a, uh, they're not overpriced, they're not underpriced. I mean, they're, they're kind of like spot on, like it, it, on there. So I, I would definitely recommend this, but I try to try to keep these and save them for a, uh, you know more important projects so they don't get worn down because i think this whole set here is like a hundred dollars maybe a give or take 10 or 20. 25. sorry if this looks shitty i'm not just a complete klutz but trying to do everything one-handed and film holding my phone not the easiest task in the whole world and I have yet to invest in a uh, like a camera or a GoPro or anything like that that could make this easier going on now we've got a I got a, all of that assembly uh, got Teflon tape and assembled there so now that connection just got to be hooked up to uh, the orange hoses over there and I've got to figure out how I'm gonna do the small white hose here that actually pumps the coolant through so what I'm thinking is, or what I'm going to attempt is, and we'll see how well it works tonight, uh, tonight or tomorrow, depending on when the epoxy dries. If it doesn't work well, I'm going to try and figure something else out where I actually get a correct fitting or something. But because this is all the, like I said, at Tractor Supply tonight, they've had a very limited selection of pipe things that uh for what i needed and everything was super disorganized there i was really disappointed in that but the time i went up there it was like eight o'clock you know the other hardware stores around here were already closed or it was going to take too long to get to one before they closed but so what i'm going to try attempt to do here which i've seen someone else do on a video where they had a successful DIY cooling system and it's basically what I've done previously that had worked with like the Gatorade bottles although it did begin to fail months and months later on down the road is to drill a hole through this plug right here and I'm gonna then feed the white hose through it and epoxy around the top of it to give it a seal maybe try and do a little bit of epoxy on the inside up in there i don't know if i want to do it up it yeah i can do it up inside i guess but i know like i said i just noticed if you come over here and look at this one like the whole problem with this is this has not been used even before i ever even added pressure to it after doing it within 24 or 48 hours like look at the epoxy layer here like it's already it just it didn't hold to that plastic good at all and i don't know if that's because i just what i was using or what i am using is this clear weld quick setting epoxy from jv weld i know they make a plastic specific one but because i also tended to 
and previously put epoxy around the metal fittings I, I didn't get the plastic specific one because like in here like that's not a tapped that's just a hole drilled and that pipe fitting or that hose fitting just kind of pushed in there and epoxied around it so if this doesn't work out too well I could try the plastic specific epoxy but I think if, if this doesn't wind up working I'm going to wind up trying to go to a different hardware store another day and get some sort of a metal uh, threaded plug like that where I can then drill it and tap it to fit this right here and I'll just take that off and I'll have one of those on each end of the needle valve because since I had to kind of disassemble that to source parts on the other side, that bag up there underneath the super blue has got another one of those uh, coolant hose kits in it. But yeah, so I'm gonna drill this out and hopefully see how this is gonna work tonight, but I'm not really getting my hopes up. Okay, so that, even though I mic that hose over there, not mic, I use the calipers for it. It may have been deformed a little bit because that hole I just drilled with the number 25 seemed to be a little bit undersized. And I can't fit that other hose through it. Even though I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use. I'm sure that that just wasn't an accurate read or something. Okay, so that one over there on that other hose said that it was actually 0.16, which would be this here, uh, on there now that's not going to work I used the number 20 but I felt like it was a little bit too big the hole that it produced and obviously I'm doing this with a hand drill so it's not the most accurate like it could be egging things out or oversizing it a little bit but since it's not a metal part and it has the be epoxied in there and you know it's already questionable of how well it's going to work I'm not going to take the time to try and go and set set it up in one of the mills okay, this is a 21 
Yep, that 21 didn't do it. That did it with the 20, as you can see. If I can manage to somehow show you this with one hand. Let me see how I'm gonna try and do this. Here. the hole and it's actually snug in there this time unlike it was with the uh, the bottle that's over there currently which I also used a different number 20 this time previously I had used one of those shitty Harbor Freight ones and uh, so maybe it just egged the other one out last time pretty bad, which is why it was loose compared to this one. Okay, so I decided that since I had that brand new um, coolant hose kit, and since I'm using this new uh, water filter container, and I'm gonna have to apply epoxy to it to try and get it to stick in this little guy that I'm best off using the hose from that kit that the coolant actually goes through to uh, have the epoxy applied to to hopefully have it seal up better and you know dry better to it because the other two hoses that I have that have previously been used the last six months have obviously, even though I've wiped them down and tried to clean them up, they're still kind of oily, grimy feeling on them. And I just see that as being a failure point in the future. And if I have to, if, if this works and I wind up doing a second one of these systems on the machine, I'll, I'll just uh, source a new hose and trash the old two or something. But so I took this hose out of that new kit, but I'm still gonna just use the same actual nozzles that are up there on the, on the machine that are already mounted or the, the one on the right for now and then the one on the left eventually and save that other nozzle to probably put on this machine back here or maybe if I ever get around to getting a surface grinder here soon, put it on that. But uh. So, so uh, I feel like this is kind of important to point out because I got this, uh, here's the water filter container I got. It's Culligan brand model HF360A. It's a little bit different than the videos of the ones I saw people, that, or that I'd seen in the video the guy had. And that in the video he had, it did not have this on off switch on the top. And, uh, it had a little red button that has to be depressed in there by the on off switch on his but it didn't have the actual thing that turns and as you can see when you turn this to be on and off it moves that plunger that looks like a delrin or whatever that white plunger in there with an o-ring kind of on the back side you can't see it pulls that in and out on 
They're okay, there's others on both sides. You can see it there, the O-ring on that side. But it moves it in and out. And so I had to fish this uh, this little hose up through that. I didn't want to just disassemble this whole thing and remove the whole Delrin on off plug. So I was able to fish it up through there and with a pair of needle nose pull it out. So now that I've done that, so basically it's gonna wind up being stuck as like permanently on so I can't close it because of that. But now that I've got this fitted to where, let's see. And right now I still have that the filter on this one because it's brand new. I'll probably keep it on there for a little while until it gunks up and like the last one did and then take it off. But hold on, I gotta put the phone down and do this. Okay, so I'm about to epoxy this end of the hose into the plug. But uh, since it's going to take about an hour for that epoxy to cure, um, well, at least it take, I think I can, yeah, five minutes to set, like an hour to cure or something. And because of the way that this uh, hose from the coolant nozzle kit was shipped, it keeps wanting to have a natural curl to it. And so when I go to stick this end down in the container there, and once I actually get it thread, get it threaded onto the container right there, it the this filter end right here doesn't want to reach the very bottom. It starts getting twisted up in there and pulled up because it doesn't just hang straight. So I've decided what I'm going to do here is I I just threw a nail into the workbench right there and have those uh, that wrench right there just holding that. So I'm gonna do the epoxy on here and then just kind of let this, I'm gonna pull the chair out just a little bit to add a little bit of tension to this end of it. So while it's sitting there for an hour, hopefully it'll kind of straighten out some of that natural curly fry type deal it wants to do because I want the filter end to be at the very bottom. That way I'm not having to you know, I don't want to lose a whole inch of coolant of every batch that I have to, you know, I can't even get it sucked up out of there to use. I want to try and drain that before I have to refill it every time. But so, that's where I'm at with this. I'm about to, like I said, I'm about to put this through here, the, that end through here, apply some epoxy, let it sit, and then I've got another project that I'm going to start working on in the meantime. And once that epoxy sets, the only thing that'll be left is to get this container mounted over there onto the machine, which I have a couple of ideas for that I'll examine while the epoxy is setting and figure out which one I'm going to go with. But yeah, so that's where we're at. Okay, so I got the hose epoxied in there, as you can see. And a day later so I've let it cure for longer than it needed to have actually I put a couple layers of epoxy on there kind of built it up to just because I'm sure that at some point it's gonna there's a good chance it's gonna fail months on down the road like the Gatorade bottle did just because it's on a plastic and the moisture inside there and whatnot but uh and because this whole machine is an open system without an enclosure and so coolant and shit's always just getting all over everything but um yeah i got that there and I'm, the way i decided to mount the container here was just on the previous container i had you can see this where i cut it off but this little black piece of metal down here i don't even remember I think it was something some, it came it was a piece of scrap metal that I can't remember if it came with something I bought as a component or if it was part of a packaging for a heavier object but it was basically 
a bent piece of metal and it came out at the bottom like kind of almost like an angle iron but it was a lot wider it was like about as wide as my two fingers right there and uh so i had the gatorade bottles were used to just sit on that little ledge and then were held on with the pipe clamp but i had cut off cut that bottom part off for the other jug and was just using the pipe clamp on the handle but so i just went and switched out the pipe clamps for a bigger one and just let that sit in there just like that now I'm, i don't even think i'm not even gonna have to buy i may tighten it up just a little bit more but i'm probably not even i used to have to with the gatorade bottles i would snug it up and have to come and undo it when it was time and to time to refill it i'm probably gonna just keep this one since it's a heavier container and just make it where it's snug enough to where it won't move around too much but to where i i don't have to go get a screwdriver or a drill to get it out of there where i can just do it by hand but so i'm about to fill it up with the coolant and then gonna pressurize it and see how it goes i'm not gonna actually do any cutting of anything just yet because i'm in the process of uh cold bluing some parts which i'm actually gonna also film the next one part that i cold blew after this test run and probably make a video of that too but okay so Well, at the very least, I at least I got a jug of pre-mixed coolant that's already been the oil's already been settled with the water and diluted in there and mixed up good. But okay, I'm gonna have to put the phone down to get this lid screwed back on because I'm gonna need two hands for it. So just a second. Okay, so there it is. I got it hooked up there and I got the smaller hose line, you know, up through that clamp I have up there to kind of keep it out of the way. And it's all, it's all hooked up. So now it's just time to pressurize it and see how it works, if there's any leaks and whatnot. Now I think, I'm pretty sure it said that this container operates at uh between 30 and 100 psi so that should uh that should be fine because i usually would operate the gatorade bottle at like 38 so let me make sure i got enough air pressure <laughs> test it it's like got 80 psi i think in the tank 80 now it's 100 actually but okay so let's see i've already opened the valve to the air line but i have not opened the valve to the coolant line yet that's open oh, okay you can see the coolant just filled up the line. And we're going to start at 20. Okay, there's a little bit of coolant coming out actually, but that's, maybe I didn't have that closed all the way. Okay, so that's closed off. 
where it's just air. Now this is 20 PSI. Oh yeah, that's that's way stronger than before. Probably because I got that new hose and line on there. It's not all gunked up with old nasty coolant. But okay, so there's no leaks. Can't hear no, nothing like I could with the Gatorade bottles. So I'm gonna say that this was a success. You can see right there. Yeah, that's only got like just over 20 psi going into it which is fine so i'm gonna turn that off since i'm not gonna run the machine right now just because i don't i in my mind having any amount of pressure in the container on any of the components may contribute to the weakening of the epoxy there and I really, this has been a pain in the ass having to deal with this for multiple days this week. And I don't want to have to fucking do this for as long as I don't have to do it again until I do the next container on the other side. Which, like I previously said, I'm going to do the quote-unquote heavy-duty water filter thing uh, container that Tractor Supply sells, which is about two or three times the size of that one I'm not sure if the numbers for the model number correspond to the volume of fluid or what but like this one right here is the HF360A and the heavy duty one was a I can't remember if the letters were the same or not but I think it was like a 900 and 60 or 950 it was in the 900 range was the number so assuming that that corresponds to the amount of volume in there that would be about just under three times the amount of coolant that, that one holds but okay well i guess that's that for that project hopefully uh anybody else that's out there wanting to <clears throat> install a DIY mist coolant system on their milling machine can find this video and learn from it and not make the same mistakes that I made having to you know go through different kinds of containers and different setups and I think I'm gonna be happy with this one until the day comes one day that I may upgrade to a flood coolant system but I'm just I'm skeptical of that with this not even being a enclosed machine like yeah the mist coolant itself sucks with how this is only a single car garage so it gets real fogged up in here and I gotta have the back door open and that fan on trying to you know get the shit out of the air but at the same time I feel like a flood coolant system on a open machine like this has a would be even messier i mean yeah there's a way that if i got it dialed in real well i could contain it and have just the run excess runoff in the t slots of the table and have it feed into a back into another tank or the same tank or something but that would be a there's a lot more money involved in trying to set up a flood coolant system whether you just buy one outright or DIY one than there is with these mist coolant systems and so yep I think this is gonna be it for for a while at least but yeah next time I actually get to doing some cuts maybe later this evening after I finish doing the bluing project I'm working on I'll uh, get some video footage of me actually using the new coolant system on there while making some stuff and maybe put that up in a different video or something but Okay, well, take it easy, guys.